Hey guys, looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. Good job. I'm so glad you guys are here. I hope all the sound is okay. We are just uh, doing some tests here. Something new to... Little glitchy, but pretty cool. I got to show you guys. You're going to be happy. So I'm just going to go to my videos here. And there is part two. And I'm going to see what I see. Oh, got to mute this. Okay, so that looks good so far. I can see that. Let's go ahead and see who's in chat here. So, we're going to go ahead and authorize this. Hope everyone had a good week. Can't believe it's August already, right? That's pretty crazy. This summer is going quick. Not that I'm complaining. Can't wait to autumn. That's my favorite. And I should see you guys in two, three, one, boom. Okay, there we go. Great. So it looks like we have Willie and Jersey Joe. Good to see you. Uh, we got Jacob and Ray. David, great to see you. So uh, this is fantastic. Brush strokes. Good to see you, my friend. So that is so cool. So... Let me go ahead and show you the new thing. Look at this. Bam! So doesn't that look really cool? A little glitchy, but we're working that out. And it's just, uh, you know, this new program I was playing with yesterday. So it's, it's pretty neat. I can change the background. I can blur it. So it's pretty good if I'm doing, like, tutorials or something like that. So I thought that was really cool. So I had to work on the microphone, get everything all situated and also figure out where to put that actual camera so this is pretty neat so I'm pretty happy with that and let's go back to our artwork so I thought that was really cool huh that was uh, a little bit different so so tone one third floor how's it going Wendy how are you uh, so uh, that's really cool so I'm so glad that uh, that Jake is doing really well, so that's cool with his process, so I like hearing that. So here we are in part two of this beautiful lady here, Jean Tierney. And uh, so I'm really happy with the way that other, that other scene came out, so I really like that. All right, so we're still gonna go with the light mixture. We're going to separate, uh, we're going to be calling it mixture light, medium, and dark for now on. It's not going to be uh, 6 to 21, 6 to 10, uh, 6 to 6. I'm just going to be referring that as light, medium, and tone dilutions for now on. So, very cool. So, what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and just start to work here. Let's move that over. Take off these glasses. So we're just going to sort of reinforce some of these shapes here. And that's what we're doing right now. It's we're going to be reinforcing the shapes. You guys feel that the image is too light or, uh, or is it? I think it go a little darker, right? Let's see. There we go. Put a little definition on there. I think that's better. I like it. And there we go. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to refine some of these shapes, you know, with the light mixture, which is really cool. Same thing over here. We're just going to define the shapes. We're not getting too involved in detail just yet. But we do want to nail these shapes and we also want to get the relationships down. And remember, look for a second, paint for a second. It's always a good rule of thumb. Another cool thing, I bought two new pair of gloves, so I thought that was pretty neat. So I have it on both sides. So that was pretty cool. 
So I did go on Brushstrokes uh, live stream last week, and that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. Very nice to get to meet him and and to see him on the other side. So definitely, definitely was nice. He's doing some great work over there. Same thing with Jacob. Doing some really cool things on his live stream. Oh, wow. Brushstroke hasn't gotten his glove yet. Oh, man. Oh, you got a couple of those gloves. Very cool. Aren't they the best things in sliced bread? I really think so. So we're just working on those shapes here. And this is going to really help us down the line. So just, so right now we're doing the heavy lifting. And the first... Okay, part 1, 2, and 3 is all the heavy lifting. Parts 4 and 5 are going to be really, really cool as far as really get in there and start bringing everything together but that patience of one two and three part one two and three is so important oh man thank you i was so glad i got to see that as well it was very informative and just it's just very refreshing to work in this very light mixture here So we're really working on these shapes. It looks like it's dark, but it's very light and compared to where we're going. Okay, so that's basically what we want to do is uh, keep moving around, which is crucial. So Ray's doing some really great work over there. Uh, in the Cleveland area. I really like what he's doing. He's uh, really taking well to this technique. It's just fantastic. It's fantastic to see. And the great thing about this technique, if you ever take my uh, either my online class or uh, my online workshops or my workshops in person that this technique works and it, you'll see it come together and it'll change the way you look at things for the better let that dry so my friend Dion who's an ink flinger here uh, he sent me some really great information on wire which I definitely want to share with you guys how he uses wire to uh, like I do with uh, blackbeard wheat but I can't get the blackbeard wheat to curve and he gets the wire to curve so that's really exciting so once I get the wire and I make my own I'm gonna definitely share it with you guys in the video This uh, sort of preliminary stuff here is really going to come together at the very end. And of course, you want to use your freehand shield. And we're going to keep that really nice edge, sort of reinforce that edge on her ear. You don't want to lose it. You don't want to lose the really hard work you did with the drawing. And we're going to not, we're going to go try and go parallel and. Uh, and not per try and go perpendicular not parallel to the freehand shield when at all possible Willie says the wire is nice because you can shape it that's exactly what Dion was saying right it really is fantastic I just imagine how it's gonna make my life easier with my portraits and also maybe doing some of the uh, uh, you know curvature of anatomy when I'm painting my nudes both male and female nudes. And 
and as you can see we are just moving around looking for a second and then painting for a second that's another one of those like little rules I like to uh, have when I'm painting is look for a second and then paint for a second there we go and when you're doing that rule of looking and then painting you're really not going off on a tangent you're really forced to really pay attention to what you're painting so how's the picture and sound today guys pretty good is it on par with everything else I hope So I'm just loading my airbrush with some more 6 to 21. Make sure you cover it. Sort of prevent disasters before they happen. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Willie and David. I really appreciate that. So we got good sound, good picture quality. And it's Wednesday, so that's very cool. So this is always, and always test the spray. Not on your artwork, but on a test paper. Ah, oh, thanks brush stroke, I appreciate that very much. And we're gonna reinforce, you know, why we're doing this. Let's go ahead and reinforce our nice hard edge here. That's a super hard edge here. We want to make sure we don't go too wet. And it's hard to go too wet when we're really paying attention and doing that one second rule. And sometimes you might feel that, and I don't do this over my artwork ever, but I'll do it today just to show you guys that, you know, you might get a little stickiness here. Uh, that's no problem. Two things. You just uh, see if there's any kind of tip dry and also you just pull the trigger back for a second. And okay, now it feels good. Now it's, it's not like I'm feeling anything like totally bad that's going to inhibit the paint. But when you work all those hours like I do, anything feels a little bit different you know it's concerning so I go ahead and I adjust that and you know the more you guys paint the more you guys are gonna feel that and let's continue to do that one second one second looking one second painting And notice I'm not getting involved with any kind of, uh, you know, hairs or anything like that. I'm just looking for those big shapes. Because hair are just big shapes at first. That's all it is. Oh, Tone One says he got himself some Speedball ink. I can't wait to finish. Uh, and uh, what are you going to try out? That's so fantastic. That is so cool. I'm glad to hear that. Oh wow! So, uh, so Tone, you're working on Catwoman. I'm gonna go check that out. Definitely. That's really great. Uh, I'm gonna send you an invitation to our. Since you're now friends with me on Facebook, I'm gonna send you guys invitations to our Ink Flingers group, which is really great.
that's reinforced. And you know, as you go and you're reinforcing, maybe even refining some of these contours, this is called contour on the outside, guys, which is different than contour on the inside. So there are contours on the inside and shapes on the inside. Uh, a little bit trickier, a little bit more complicated, but we're gonna talk about that down the line. And this is, uh, yeah, the group is really great. It's fantastic. Wendy, are you here? Wendy's always great. She, she always helps me and invites uh, you know, a lot of you guys, which is cool. So if you can, go ahead and uh, befriend Wendy. She might be able to get you into that group while we're talking. She's a co-moderator. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Wendy. So Wendy's going to go ahead and uh, hook you guys up if she hasn't already. Wendy's fantastic. So so she's, uh, and also you guys can post. And, you know, it's, it's a great place to post and talk. And people are still there who don't have time to come here anymore, who used to come. So it's, it's really great. It's a nice little community uh, we're, we're uh, having, which is really cool. Very nice community, just like our live streams here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and probably extend this dark over here. And I think that's really cool. All right, so cool. So I'm very excited. So we're going to go ahead and extend this dark. Now there's a little bit of a reflected light right here. And that's going to darken as we darken the other areas. And you just want to just want to work on this, right? And you just want to continue moving around, doing that one second rule of looking for a second and painting for a second. And you can do that continuously. You know, you don't have to stop. You can look for a second and paint for a second. But make sure you're looking. Same thing right here, we have this sort of hair shape right there. We want to keep it masked, you know, we don't want to get too individual here. So keep the largest shapes as possible. So today I sent out artwork that I sold to Pittsburgh, Maryland, and California. So that was a cool feeling. Uh, you know, sending out sold work is always good. Hey Mike, how's it going? How's everything? Hey, can't go wrong with Jimmy Stewart, right? The Wonderful Life, my favorite movie in the world. Philadelphia Story was okay, you know, but, you know, uh, it was okay. I don't know, it had a lot of stars and it just seemed to be, you know, kind of disjointed, but... Definitely, Harvey was great, and I really loved, uh, really loved uh, It's a Wonderful Life. You Can't Take It With You. He was really young in that one. I believe he was in that one, right, guys? Yeah, Willie, me too. Old movies, those are the best. 
you know, Greta Garbo, Gene Tierney, you know, uh, seems to be that's the theme of these live streams lately. I don't know why, but I guess I'm getting into them again. Oh, yes, TMC is fantastic. What I found was weird was movies I saw as a kid are con being considered as classics. And I'm like, wait a second, The Breakfast Club is not a classic. But now it's beginning to be, right? So, life, life, life moves on. Well, we'll straighten that up if you can't get in there, that's for sure. Thanks, Wendy, for working on that. I appreciate it so much. Oh, thanks, Tone. I appreciate that. I'm going to unify this dark here. Bring that down. Then bring that dark down, intensify this dark here, but make sure you pay attention to the edges, you know, just don't put the value, it's okay to hit the value, but know how those edges really, really uh, line up, you know, how they buttress up against each other. I'm just going to move around, I'm going to intensify the dark here. Right there in the ear. So it's important, it's very crucial guys to move around as much as possible. Because what you're doing is you're you're painting the whole thing, which is really fantastic. Yeah, Wendy, I I did uh do hope that you have your air conditioning working because I was hearing how hot it is over there in uh, Texas today. You uh, you mentioned just a little bit earlier. And you, you want to adjust your distance when you are uh, wanting something a very smooth gradation or working on a larger area if you're working close you're going to get a lot of broken up tone but if you're further away watch you're going to actually get a much smoother gradation and if you don't want a gradation just a smoother area of tone I'm just moving around. I'm not even thinking about uh, one second of finishing this. That's not even in my thought process right now. Right now it's just about moving around and trying to uh, bring everything together at one time. So Wendy says, it got hot again. I just gave up and it got better. Weird because that shouldn't happen. Oh my God. So I had the coil replaced and Freon but outside unit froze again. <gasps> Oh my God, it froze again, that's terrible. And, and my guest says, Tim, why do artists put so much work into their art to make it look as real as possible, then paint it blue or pink like a dragon? That's interesting, you know, it's, uh, that's an interesting question, Mike. And, you know, it's different viewpoints, I guess, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I guess people are going for style too, Mike, sometimes. And it's good to make it look real, but it's okay to make it look different too, you know. As long as that's their intention. If their intention to make them look realistic and they make it pink, then that's, you know, they're having an issue with, with color, you know, Mike? So it all depends on whether or not they're doing it on purpose and not a limitation. There is a cast shadow from her eyelashes. 
onto the whites of her eye here. I'm just going to go ahead and put that in. And what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and actually I'll go ahead and actually refine that but right now that's that's pretty much how I'm gonna do it and so that's really gonna translate but that's something down the line and let's take a look at the other eye because what we do on one eye we usually have to do on the second eye unless it's not there but we definitely want to develop both eyes together which is very important let's see so ah oh, thank you Ray Ray says he went to the wrong school should have used Tim I appreciate that thanks so much Ray that means a lot to me uh, let's see so okay so I'm gonna look at the reference and I do see that we have a really nice hard edge here we're gonna go ahead and get that if we're going perpendicular we're really we're really going to uh, perpendicular to the freehand shield we're gonna have a lot more control So I've been painting all day, so all morning and then all day, so you get a lot more tip dry and stuff like that when you're painting all day, but that's okay. So you might see me stopping to adjust my airbrush a little bit in the course of this live stream. While I'm here, I'm just going to work on some of the detail in those irises or pupa irises right look for a second paint for a second if I don't do that it's not gonna look right guys that's for sure Yes, have him check it ASAP because uh, he definitely, uh, I'm sure it's guaranteed. So if you can have him there ASAP, Wendy, uh, I don't want you guys to be without an air conditioner. That would be horrible, like on a Sunday or something. Or Labor Day weekend. He might be off in, uh, you know, off fishing and then that's going to be a long three day weekend or something like that so that would be horrible what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on I'm going to move over here to her her mouth there we go. I'm going to use that freehand shield to accentuate this this angle here that nice hard edge and take your time finding that hard edge in that you know take your time finding that edge with your freehand shield there's no rush there's no points for quickness so if you need a little extra time no problem there we go and you're not going to get you know a really harsh uh, you're not going to get a very uh, you're not going to get very strong uh, edges with the 6 to 21 mixture or the, the uh, light mixture. When you go into the mid-tone mixture, that's when things are really going to work out. And you're going to see things really start to pop. This is the heavy lifting, like I said earlier. But it's so important, even though it's the early stages, you still want to make sure that you are really paying attention all right so right here we have a light area I mean a dark right over here because remember this forehead is turning 
the light source is coming from this direction here and you can see the forehead as it turns away is turning away from the light and to depict that you definitely have to uh, see where that is happening with the shadow and shadow is just a relative absence of light so you have your highlights which is pure pure light and then everything else is relatively less light and you have to go ahead and depict that relativity. So you see right now we're making that turn, right? Because we hit that value. If you don't hit that value and pay attention to the shape, it's gonna look flat, it's gonna continue looking flat. Um, Mike S says, shouldn't the left eye be more oval to show the roundness and distance back from the viewer? Well, that's the thing, you, uh, not necessarily. You don't want to get involved in uh, dogma, Mike. So you want to basically, yes, I do def definitely, I know what you mean. It should be, but it's not. So it's good to know those things, but it's also very important to uh, really look at that reference because, uh, you know, we have to trust our eyes when we're really observing. Remember to paint for a second and and look for a second and vice versa so you see there really isn't much of an oval going on uh, so even though it should be it's not there that's only because I'm really looking hard you know Mike so we're gonna really pay attention to that and let's let's move along this edge here Okay, so it looks like we have a hard edge right over here. See that? And let's go ahead and blow that up. So I'm seeing a hard edge as it comes down right there. And I'm going to go ahead and hit that perpendicular. There go. And then we can also Remember, it's not the value, the value's right, but it doesn't look dark because of the value next to it. So what we have to do is make sure the value next to it's correct. And by lightening that value, what I'm doing is darkening the shadow because it's all about contrast, what's next to it. So what we're going to do also is that we have some drawing to do and I'm going to do some of that drawing with the airbrush and how I'm going to do it is by really paying attention and looking for a second and then painting for a second. I'm going to indicate the eyelashes, but they're just indications. They're going to be obliterated, and I'm going to go back in again. But putting in the eyelashes is actually right now going to help me with the drawing aspect of her eye here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to find the different landmarks. And you'll find that, you know, there are times you're going to be drawing in the middle of your painting because either, uh, you know, the projection wasn't good enough or, or you know, maybe you missed something. So you've got to be having to make these micro adjustments here and there. That's all part of it. So you see, those micro adjustments are really important. Uh, Wendy says, Tim... Uh, why am I not finding your videos on Twitch? Oh, after a while, uh, Wendy, Twitch removes them. I got to go back and start doing Twitch again. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't done Twitch in such a long time. The paper that I'm using is uh, Canford Cardstock by Dayla Rowney. This color is Dreadnought Gray, uh, Jake, so I hope that helps. Raul, good to see you. How's it going? 
so Mike says, uh, just paint what you see and not put things that are, are not in the pick. Exactly. So true. It's good to, uh, you know, what you're doing is great. Think about it logically and have that, okay, so like you said, that's good thinking. And combine that with looking and then you could really, you know, have really great observations. So I like your thinking, Mike. That's really great. Uh, but make sure that we don't put it there because it should be, you know, like proportions. You know, people get into proportions. Well, you know, people's eyes are not always lined up perfectly. Uh, people are sometimes, you know, nine heads long as opposed to eight and a half, let, eight heads long or seven and a half. So those are like good guidelines, but, you know, with people, you know, you definitely get variations in nature, you know. Can you get this paper at Hobby Lobby? I don't believe so. I think at this point, the only place you can get, the only two places you can possibly get this paper would be Jerry's Autorama and Dick Blick. Those are the only two right now. Uh, if you go ahead and get the larger size, like uh, Ray did, I recommend you going to Blick because the way they pack it is really fantastic at Blick. And uh, Ray showed me the pictures, you know, of how they packed it, and it was really fantastic. They go to great lengths. That's why you pay a little more with handling charges, but your paper's going to arrive perfect the first time, which is really cool. So that's pretty neat. Now this is not white here. It's uh, a lot darker, so I'm going to be about two and a half inches away. And I'm just going to dust that and darken that up a bit. What that does also, it makes this eye go backwards in space and this eye come forward a little bit. And how we're going to increase that also, we're going to increase the contrast here. So let's go ahead and uh, see if we can do that. Increase the contrast here. Bring this eye closer than this eye. And how we're going to do that is uh, make this a little bit darker. And we're going to continue with that one second rule. Paint one second, look one second. That's like the most important rule. If I have any rule out there, that's the most important. And Willie says that he got it from Jerry's and it was packed very well. Very cool. So, so Jerry's does it. So both of them are really great to, uh, uh, great testimonies on both of those companies. Uh, uh, Jake, definitely. So I like the way that this is working out here. Let's even reiterate this dark here. And of course, where we do something on one side, we're going to definitely make sure that we do it on the other side and also bring that, those darks down, right? And, and let's see. So. Uh, David says, Rapid, where you're from, because that's my old area code. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, cool. There we go. Now let's go ahead and work on her nostril area. This is the cast shadow. So we're going to work on the cast shadow. And we're going to see that there are areas that are darker and areas that are lighter. And there's also some detail that are in those shadows. And we want to make sure that we're not just putting, you know, just this like one value and that's it. We definitely want to feel that there's something going on in that shadow. You know what I mean? You see that? Something going on in that shadow. There are your details that are in the lights and they're like, loud voices and there's details in the shadow and their whispers so definitely always think about that wendy says blick is the best to purchase paper but you need to purchase 35 dollars for free shipping and if you order the large sheets you have to order at least 10 if you think you can get char and yes you will get charged a fee i know that thanks so much for that wendy 
it's cool we can all share our experiences here which is very nice Just refining that shape between those two eyes there. I mean the eye and the eye and the uh, eyebrow here. I'm gonna continue here with the nostril, the cast shadow. Do some form shadow here. Difference between cast shadow and form shadow. Cast shadow is controlled by by the light and also the form moving away from the light and towards the light. That's form shadow. Cast shadow is when something is blocking the light from from hitting it altogether and it casts a shadow of its shape onto the surface therefore cast it's casting it and its shape is actually draping along the surface as if you have a sheet over a car so when you know you have a sheet over your car and you drape it over the, the sheet over the car the sheet takes on the shape of the car and that's what a cast shadow is doing so when you have the cast shadow going correctly it's going to describe the form that's underneath it so that's really fantastic. Bradley, good to see you. How's it going? Bradley, check this out, man. You're going to like this. Look at that. How cool is that, right? So I got this new camera, Bradley, and uh, still a little glitching, but I think it's pretty cool nonetheless. I can put different backgrounds there. And uh, so I just worked on that last night. Just wanted, didn't want you to see that, Bradley, and also you guys who might have missed it who came later. So I'm pretty proud of that little camera there. That's uh, it's actually not a camera; it's a virtual camera, and it actually is a program that works with one of your existing webcams. It's really quite wild. It's still in its infancy. I don't have thanks, Wendy. I don't have oh, any plans for a book. Definitely uh, for airbrush, not just yet, but. I'm definitely trying to get that uh, pastel book published. Uh, I'm going to be pulling that from the website pretty soon. And then I'm going to try and get a publisher for that. I'm going to do an ebook. There's an ebook in the, in the works for uh, doing eBay and selling your work online. I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I appreciate the inquiry on that. So uh, thank you, Willie. And thank you so much, Wendy, and thank you, uh, Bradley. Yeah, it's so cool, right? I kind of really like that. Uh, it didn't cost anything, so at this point, I got to find things that don't cost anything. But when I do, and it helps the channel, that's really great. Yes, the Logitech does have a green screen feature with this other program, but this is actually a little better. And it actually gets rid of your chair too, which is really neat. I can do different things with that. I can actually blur my background, which is really neat. Uh, so it's really fantastic. Uh, it's with XSplit. So if you have any questions, guys, just IM me and I'll be happy to help you out. You have to have, uh, you know, the license for XSplit, which comes with a monthly charge. So as you can see, we're just moving around, and this is pretty cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can... So we worked on this cast shadow, which is very nice. I'm pretty happy with it. So let's see if we can go ahead, and since we darkened that, I was going to do the cheeks here, uh, but I'm going to hold off. And let's see if we can... Uh, go ahead and uh, pull that down 
I love the Logitech cameras. My main camera here is, uh, let me show you, my main car camera is a DSLR. It's the uh, Canon SL2 and you can see all my camera equipment if you're interested in the uh, my Amazon store. Oh man, thanks Frank. Good to talk to you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for everything, my friend. So Ray's doing some great stuff. And check out his Facebook uh, page. He's working on something with me. You guys got to see it. It's really fantastic. Ray's taking my online class. And he is just kicking ass. He is really doing well. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with his progress. Very talented man. So it's really working out well with the Skype and doing the uh, the uh, online um, online workshop. So a lot better than the, a lot better than I thought it would be, which is really great. So I'm able to really really teach and see what the students doing, and also the student can watch me work on the class. Yes, uh, Bradley, definitely. So what I'm offering is a uh, online workshop and it is uh, you know it's working on uh, one uh, one project like this and it you know how long you it takes for you to do it and usually a week or two and it could be at your at your schedule you know I work with you guys so if you want any more information on that let me know so that would be really cool But I'll tell you, you'll really learn a lot if you take that class with me because not only are you going to learn how to use the airbrush and the dilutions and, and also, you know, the method, you're going to learn some of my, uh, some of my techniques to uh, draw and, and to really look and to get that realism and to really, uh, really hone in on on your observation skills and we go over a couple of books together and some chapters and explain a lot of what's happening with light and dark so if you're interested I am me and definitely have some openings coming up so we definitely could work on that together I accept PayPal and like I said you know it's a lot better than if you ever took a class uh, other online classes because What's more important to me is that I teach you guys as much as I can. So I'm not a real stickler for time or anything like that. Just real stickler for you guys learning as much as possible. Thank you, Bradley. Uh, I really appreciate that. It really is value, you know, and that's what I want to give. I want to give value. A lot valued and then what's out there already. And, you know, if I do that, I think it will be successful because, you know, those who take my class are really going to come away with it. Not only come away with, you know, working together, but come away with being able to uh, see things in their work when they leave me, when they leave the class. But, you know, I have a prediction. I prediction that those who take my class will be taking my class throughout the year. For you know more advanced training maybe going into training with pastel painting or even just drawing with pencil so I know by giving value that my students will come back and it's always been like that when I work one-on-one -on -one in my studio now I can work one-on-one -on -one over the internet which is fantastic it's like looking over my shoulder I'm looking over your shoulder Wendy says, Tim, I will do it as soon as I can, airbrush in my house, and cools off some. Oh, that would be wonderful, Wendy. I would, it would be so exciting and such an honor to teach you, so I would love that. That would be really, really cool. And I also teach color, so if anyone's interested in color airbrushing, uh, we definitely do that, you know, working in acrylic, um, doing portraits which is really cool. How to use freehand shields, how to use uh, frisket, sequential masking, all that stuff. 
this channel is basically just concentrating on India Inc. Oh, the Canfords cardstock, cardstock, whether or not Blick still has it. I think they still have it in the larger size, Wendy, but I'm not sure. Yes, exactly, Wendy. This is Dreadnought Gray. Okay, this is a cool amendment on the paper that I use. Now, I'm going to be right back. Remember the Dreadnought Gray, we always... Alan, good to see you. How you doing? So glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming by, Alan. Now, with the Dreadnought Gray, this is very crucial. Uh, there are two sides. There's this side and the side with the sticker. You definitely want to use the side with the sticker. You're going to very carefully peel that off. It's going to be a little bit weirdness over here. You're just going to make sure you compose your work where it's not an important area. So my sticker, I believe, was right over here. It's not an important area. It's not going to come back to haunt me. So remember, the side with the sticker is the side you want to work for, which is really important. So they still have Dreadnought Gray, so that's great. So that's really good and at a good price. So highly recommend that. Now, if you don't, now they're, discount, they're discontinuing that, guys. So... Uh, the new paper that we're using and a sponsor of the company, uh, the sponsor of my live stream is, uh, uh, it is Colorline by Kansan. And those are great. Those are fantastic. Uh, so, so not in stock until 821. Okay, cool. So definitely get on that waiting list when you can. So definitely the color line, which is really great, comes in the big sheets. That's really fantastic. Uh, a little bit thicker than the Canford cardstock and really takes to this technique well, guys. So color line by Canson is really good too. Uh, I would say try and get used to that paper as, you, as soon as you can because that's what's gonna be available. So when this happened, I went ahead and called Canson. I called Dela Rowney, and Canson is basically heading their paper division. And then they said they're discontinuing it. And then the color line, they were so uh, gracious to send me a bunch of it so I can try it out for you. And I can honestly say that that color line is really fantastic. Do they do the sticker in the same way as Yupo? I never used Yupo paper tone, but. Uh, it's a very low tax sticker, but still kind of a pain in the neck that it's there, right? But if you use the other side that is not with the sticker, you're going to have a problem with the texture. It's going to come back to haunt you, especially with the erasing guys. Uh, Tone says, yes, I did, Jake, and it made note in my phone. Cool, very cool. Uh, I also work in gunmetal, which is really great. I really love the gunmetal. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys an example of gunmetal that I recently had done. So gunmetal is darker. And I know you guys have seen my speed painting. So this is what you can do with gunmetal. It's a, a, a deeper, probably uh, I would say two shades deeper than the paper for, for Dreadnought Gray. But you see you can definitely do some dramatic things which I really love so I recommend that highly highly recommend uh, getting gunmetal too when you can now I know with the color line it's going to be gray and I think dark gray I'm not sure the exact names of that oh yeah pebble gray interest yeah pebble gray is uh, that is for color line is that right Jake so thanks for that. So pretty soon we're going to get ready for that darker value coming up. There we go. I'm going to work on this side plane a little bit, nothing crazy. 
but we're just going to pump the trigger a little bit rock that trigger back and forth we're at 25 psi and we're really low i i actually choked down the mac valve here so i would say probably equivalent to 15 psi light gray dark blade light gray and dark gray thank you so much jake i appreciate it. you're gonna love that paper by the way so definitely give that a shot what's really cool about doing this technique and why it's important to learn this technique this is will work great for uh doing doing some really nice grisaille work which is an underpainting using black and white and then going over this with glazes it's really going to be fantastic look at that it is almost time 10 26 <laughs> pretty soon it's going to go i'm going to see how long we can stretch this out this time there uh, willie let's see you know xsplit the broadcast software that i use they're always doing these uh patches you know but they don't ever seem to address that problem right so that's interesting so like I say, as I'm working, it seems like not much is happening, right? We're just sort of moving around, we're darkening things just a little bit. But like I say, parts one, two, and three, that's the heavy lifting. Parts four and five, that's always when things are really just exploding, everything coming together. That's when it's really, really nice. So right now, I just want you guys to see how I'm moving around. There we go. And you can do these little dagger strokes with the eraser here. There we go. So down the line, I'm going to be offering something very exciting. Uh, you're going to be able to purchase from, from my website. You're going to be able to purchase a, uh, a light, uh, middle, and dark. If you don't want to mix your own values, so you'll be able to, to have like a full uh, half ounce of the Speedball Super Black India ink. And I'm going to do the mixture of the 6 to 21, the 6 to 10, and the 6 to 6. So you can just hit the ground running and get the exact mixture that I do. Uh, which is really cool because, uh, you know, you just might want that. It's not going to be expensive. It's going to be very inexpensive. And so that's, that's if you, you know, you want to just have it ready. And I found out that if I do that in these bottles that have a little bit of like an amber quality it does not uh, how do you say it does not become dry which is really fantastic that will last a long long time 621 610 and 66 yes exactly so it's nice to be able to have that option if you want to go ahead and purchase that I can just send them out to you Heath, how's it going? How you doing? So Heath is uh, getting ready to go on vacation, right? So that's uh, pretty cool. So I'm happy there. You, I believe you said you were going to Ontario. Is that correct? Oh, Streamlabs OBS. That's pretty cool. That works really well. Uh, I liked OBS. Does it have a pay version and a free version? Is that true? That's what I heard, but I'm not sure if that's correct, Alan. So as you can see, I'm just making sure there's no tip here. Like I said, I've been working since uh, on my airbrush uh, on and off since 11 o'clock this morning, Eastern Time. So you're going to get, you know, you're going to have to adjust that a little bit. Wow, very cool. Kevin Wood's going to do some fishing.
Oh, wow. Very nice, Bradley. Where did you go on vacation? Now, Alan says he uses a free version for streaming on Twitch, and it was great for me. Oh, fantastic. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I, uh, I went with... Uh, you know why I went with x in the very beginning there, uh, Alan, is because uh, there were a lot of tutorials online. And I kind of liked the way uh, it worked with the... Uh, the Logitech cams and everything like that, but I heard good things about OBS too. A lot of streamers uh, do that. So how are you doing on uh, streamers? I mean, on on Twitch streaming, is it a lot of fun? I had a lot of fun, but you know, with painting, it hasn't caught on much. I didn't get many people. Uh, Brushstroke says not sure, but I use a free one. If so, I found out that he can uh, he can stream from his mobile devices too without the 1,000 subscribers. Really? Now, is that streaming from your mobile device with YouTube? Okay, great, that's fantastic. Sort of finding a way around it, which is really great. So you streamed with a uh, cell phone, is that correct, uh, last night? Jake? Oh, so Bradley went to San Antonio. I heard good things about San Antonio. I'm darkening up this area here of this reflected light and also really paying attention to that shape see I made it a little bit bigger than it should have been so look for a second paint for a second I want you to hear that voice in your head look for a second paint for a second that's really going to go a long way and help your observational skills All right, so now we're just going to assess the situation and see where we are uh, getting too detailed, perhaps, or where we have to catch things up, uh, you know, where things are a little too dark. And I think this shadow here is a little too dark, so we're sort of assessing the situations. So I'm also going to go ahead and uh, just, you know, sort of look around. Okay, so I see I'm not paying attention to her breast area. So let's go ahead and work on that. Before I do, it is 1033. And I see that there are problems with the chat. So I have to go ahead and reauthorize. Okay. Yeah, just be one quick minute. Let's see if I can go ahead and change the scene here. Okay, put in for the information. That should bring you guys up. In three, two, one. There you guys are. Okay, so we did. Uh, the last time, uh, so he says for sure fishing in some scotch, <laughs> nice. And then Willie says, Tim, do you have more than one extreme Patriot or just the one? Just that one, I'm really uh, working it and uh, really enjoying it. I definitely want to get a second one for the larger needle. I want to do that. I want to dedicate one for each particular function. So I definitely want to do that. Uh, and Alan says he stops terrible he said he stopped streaming he found out he was eating up it was eating up his time I see and his mental real estate even when I wasn't when he wasn't streaming so I can understand that you know my live stream you know I love hanging out with you guys it's fantastic but it does it is very taxing uh, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of money to, to do this stuff so that's cool I definitely understand Jake says, did one earlier today on his iPad for a little tour of his studios. He used his laptop webcam when nice. Okay. And 
Let's see. Look for a second paint for seconds. And really good advice. Thanks. Very cool. And Tone says he ordered a webcam. It doesn't work with his laptop to broadcast anything. That's a bummer. What brand webcam was that? And let's see. So, hey, what's up, Bill? Good to see you. Thanks for coming by, man. And let's see. Yep, 1030. And so let's see. Oh, so Bradley, you were, okay, so Bradley's also in Texas, so you guys both share that, you know, the heat that you guys are getting, so. Okay, I'm caught up with all the chat, so that's good. All right, so what we are doing is we are moving around, accepting the situation. Let me take a quick moment here. All right, I'm just going to take a sip of water. So it's. It's really great to, you know, paint an airbrush and what I like about working with the India ink when I only work with the super black India ink is what's really important is that with this super black India ink it really dilutes perfectly. It doesn't clump up like Higgins does or even the other brands, you know, such as Bombay is, is very good as well, their India ink, but it doesn't erase as well as the speedball so definitely get you some of the speedball if not i could uh definitely you can definitely get the dilutions which is uh light middle and dark that's going to be coming up really cool and then with the airbrushes you definitely want to go with either this one which is the extreme patriot arrow i use my own mac valve which is the iwata mac valve which is really fantastic so that's what i use and then also for the lights, if you look at part one, you'll see that I use Drew Blair's right here, the 5050 illustration white, which is really fantastic. And that's kind of glitching out. There you go. So we use that, which is interesting. So we're glitching out a little bit, but that's because you're really not supposed to move with this one thing. So do me a favor, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And then go ahead and hit that little bell icon so you get notified when there's a live stream coming up. And then I want you to go ahead and look in the description field and you'll see the airbrush that I use. There's a link with a 10% code. And then also there is a link to my Amazon store and you can purchase all the products that I use to uh, do these paintings. Now, that particular, those particular links with Amazon are affiliate links and I get a small percentage for that. So, let's go back to the painting. And so, okay, cool. So, let's see. So going brand name, definitely Logitech is really fantastic tone. I definitely recommend. Any of the Logitechs are fine. You can pick one up for like $49. Uh, Brushstroke says got a Logitech C922, which I have. And that's what, uh, it's really fantastic. And it, you can see it just does really great work. Uh, uh, w. Leon Artistry, Bill says, I'm surprised you didn't go with the Golden High Flow Titanium. I did try it, and you know what? With Drew, uh, this stuff is just uh, bar none, much better. Light, light, light years ahead of the golden. I wanted golden to work, but you know, just uh, just didn't cut it. So definitely go with that. And of course, I use the forty twelve reducer. Now, if you're lucky enough to get a hold of any of the 5091 reducer which aren't isn't available anymore if you can get a hold of that that would be just fantastic I still have a bottle of the 5091 which I'll use sparingly it works even better than the 4012 but the 4012 works sufficient so that's pretty cool no problem guys so and thank you so much for sharing information with each other out there that I appreciate so what we're doing is we're moving around and so we got a lot of nice plans uh we are coming up and i'm going to be giving away some 
uh, we're going to be giving away pretty soon, which is a Speedball 2 ounce India ink, uh, the Super Black. We're going to be giving that away pretty soon. I think it's going to be details in a video coming up. So that's, that's with uh, Speedball, you know, who is doing great things and believes in my channel and this technique. They've been working with me, so it's fantastic. So Jake says he's taking a class with Drew in January in Kissimmee, right? Is that true? Now I know that Jake from Brushstrokes has family living in Kissimmee. I lived in Kissimmee in the 90s, almost all the 90s I lived there. I loved it. I thought it was great. The cost of living. Oh, in Tampa. Okay, cool. Yes, I do have the uh, Dr. Martin Set 2 color ink in my store, definitely. That is what I use, and that's fantastic. And I'm still playing with it. So you see, I, I do have that, uh, Bradley, and it's really great. Um, let's see. So it's, it's really great. I really love it. Uh, just like playing with all the earth, to earth tones and everything. And uh, that's something to use. So definitely if you're going to be doing this on board or illustration board, or on wood panel uh, with a gesso marble dust or gesso mixture, that would be fantastic. So I highly recommend that. Set two is good as well. So if you, I mean, set one is good as well. I'm gonna get set one as soon as some of my affiliate uh, affiliate links uh, give me a gift card. And so that's basically the affiliate links only give me enough for you know testing out different art supplies and you know putting it back in the channel and telling you guys whether it's good or bad but I do love Doc Martens their color and I do love their white I still love their white but it seems like it definitely is this stuff erases much better so it's very important in the early going if you ever want to put down white, that's going to be even stronger. And there's going to be times where you want to put white that isn't erasable. Then I would definitely go with the Bombay white. But that's, you know, I think the illustration white is pretty cool for now. That's for sure. So I think in the future, I am going to cut down the live streams to um, but not until not for a while but instead of going from 930 to 1130 I'm gonna go 930 to 11 and uh, which is good because it might extend some of some of these uh, tutorials so uh, it might be a part six or something like that which which is good you know uh, makes it easy to follow Yeah, the illustration paint is great. Uh, I have the set of color. I don't paint with their color anymore. I did for a while. Uh, I went to golden. I like the golden line because of the mediums and also the integrity, uh, you know, of the, the chemical makeup of it, which I like. Uh, definitely, you know, I like color saturation, the ability to use, uh, you know, pastes and gels and stuff like that, which really opens things up and use regular. The good thing about uh, Golden Fluid Acrylics and their high flow is it has the same chemical properties as their heavy body. So if you're doing a, uh, if you're going ahead and doing, let's say, a painting and you want to do some impasto, you can use their heavy body in regular brush techniques on top of it, which is fantastic, but you don't have that ability with any of the create text lines so that's why I go for the most part when I'm doing color I go with golden uh, shorter streams just by a half hour so not too bad hour and a half is really cool uh, yeah little by little get those golden paints you're gonna love them you're gonna love the fact of 
all of the uh, all of the different mediums. You got gel paint, you have gel, and you have uh, paste, and you know you can do some incredible. You can do pallet knife techniques. You know, working with the high flow and the heavy body and the open acrylics, which you know work a lot like oil paint. So it's a lot of fun. So you know, Createx is fantastic, but they're limited and golden is not a limited and i know bill will definitely uh definitely attest to that because i know bill works with the uh, golden too as well i went to some of the golden workshops which was really very enlightening so remember every line of the golden products from your high flow to your heavy body to your fluid acrylics, your open line, to all your paste. They all use the same chemical makeup. So everything uses the same mediums. So you can't go wrong. You could use the airbrush medium with heavy body. You could use the regular uh, high, you can use a high flow with let's say, you know, the fluid acrylics, which is really great. So Bill says he had forgotten how thin it is, so it is going to take a bit to get used to again. Yes, very true. Uh, so yeah, so the high flow transparent used to be called the airbrush extender. They changed the name of it. Uh, it's very thin, but that's if you, which is good because you don't want to thin any acrylic more than 10 to 15% of water. So the high flow really helps you to do that. Then you can go ahead and put 10-15% 10, 10, of water and then you can get that really almost India ink quality. So dilution is the key. The key to control is dilution and airflow. You don't have those two things going, you're going to have a hard time, which is really important. So the shorter, shorter, live, stream, uh, shorter live streams are going to be only by 30 minutes which is not too bad, but I'm not going to shorten the project, so that's good. So if we need a part six sometimes, that's fine. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to her breast area, and let's see. Let's go ahead and pay attention here. Looking for a second, painting for a second. Maybe I should have called that the channel, the looking for a second, paint for a second channel. Because there's nothing more important than that. So I'm pumping the trigger. Uh, it is different. Uh, it's going to be an expensive undertaking there, uh, Tone. So. Uh, definitely know, you know, if you're going to change paint lines, it's really going to cost you a pretty penny. I would try it. I would try a sepia painting. Try, try just a sepia painting or try a black and white and see how you like it before you go into, uh, you know, that whole line. I don't want you to spend that money if you're really going to still love Createx. You know what I mean? So I don't want you to go that route unless you know definitely you're going to love it. Illustration is much better than Wicked because of the erasability, right? And you know, Drill, Drew had his hand in that, so you know, you know, you know it's really on point. So, those my friends out there, you know, my friend, you guys are all my friends, but I want to hear... I want to hear my SOTAR people. How are you guys doing with the SOTARs? Are they working well for you? Uh, the SOTAR Slim, which I really love. How are you guys doing with that one? Uh, are you really uh, enjoying that? So that's, uh, you know, I love the SOTAR Slim. It's just fantastic. This combination of these two airbrushes really make me happy. Uh, so that's a great one to punch. 
I'm also using this one right here which is the Sotar regular 2020 and it has a similar cup to the Extreme Patriot very similar uh, I like the Extreme Patriot a little more than the 2020 I want you to see something notice how far the needle comes out uh, let me change the we'll do something here okay so notice how far the needle comes out on the Extreme Patriot right really nice comes out further and then if you notice with the 2020 the needle doesn't come out quite as far so it uses the same needle this has incredible control but your Extreme Patriot Arrow has better control so I just wanted to share that with you guys and uh, you know my own viewpoints uh, so recently it's been his Olympus 100 SB the side feed that's fantastic that's great uh, so I'm glad I, I love Olympus those are fantastic aren't they I like them a lot now I think I have an Olympus over here let's see No, I, I have a couple of Omnis, but not an Olympus. But I heard great things about the Olympus. Okay. So, remember, we're going to go ahead and fix that. So, as you see, working with a, a DSLR in my live streams... I'm able to have a lot more control and also better picture quality. So that's something to think about if you're doing live streams and you want to really, you want to blow away the competition, no pun intended, with airbrush live streams. You definitely want to, if you can afford it, to get a DSLR and then you would have to get one of those uh, emulators to make your computer think that your DSLR is a webcam so you kind of like have to fake it out and there's a company called cam link uh, there's a it's called cam link and the company is called ingato so that's something to think about if you ever want to go ahead and do that let me know and i'll definitely give you a free consulting on that ah uh, thank you wendy wendy says she loves the uh close-ups Uh, Ingato is uh, E N G A T O. Close, Wendy. Uh, very good company. They make. So I did a lot of research because I I seen people use their DSLR in live streams. So it took me months to really find out how to do it. And that's exactly it, Wendy. Thank you. Is the Ingato. So we're still working on her breast area, painting for a second, and then moving along, you know. So I'm going to very quickly go and check and see the health of our live stream, which is really good. So right now we have 13 people watching, which is very healthy. I like that. So that makes me feel good. And so it's always good to be able to check that out. I'm going to be getting a second monitor. I have to find a real cheap monitor. That's my goal right now, is to find a cheap monitor so I have a two monitor system. Right now I have a one monitor system to the detriment of the channel, so I can't see everything at once. Uh, Wendy says, Mike, you have good luck on eBay for used items. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, I know, Wendy, remember you, you had kind of a hard luck with the digital projector. Remember we... We were, you were looking for that, and I think you had to send one back, if I'm not mistaken. Move this down. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Alan Allen says I deserve more than 13 viewers. Thank you, I appreciate that. You know, Alan, 
the, the 13 people are here are meant to be here, and I'm really happy and appreciate them. I know the channel's going to blow up, it's just a matter of time, and but it's nice to have this uh, more intimate group of people so I could share more with you guys. Once it blows up, then we're in big trouble because then we can't keep up. So uh, right now, some information about our channel. We are at 2,265 as of early this evening, which is really good. Healthy growth. I believe we have 45 new subscribers this last last month, which isn't too bad. Uh, I think we're up to 300,004 uh, views for the lifetime of the channel, which is good. We average between four and 5,000 views per month on the channel. And the live streams really help, so it's pretty good, you know. Things are looking up. I remember I was struggling to get the 200,000 in a year as far as watch time minutes. And now I'm getting about 600,000 a year. So far ahead of what YouTube needs to monetize the channel. So those are all very good things about the channel. Is it growing as fast as I want it to? No, but you know... That's all right. It's going to grow as fast as it does. It, it really is. So, Tone, you found out as well. In the summer, things do slow down a bit, right? And I, because I was looking at my analytics and everything was slowing down. And I think it is because of the summer. Thank you so much, Jake. I appreciate that. And, yes, it's harder. And, uh. And says, I see team has not made a paid for compressor yet. You know what? Not yet. We're working on that. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, a compressor company that's going to believe in our ink flingers and our channel. And, but they have to be a good product too. So it's sort of a slippery slope. You know, we want to make sure that we have a compressor company that is willing to work with us. And so we could definitely uh, find out, you know, you know, who really believes in the channel and that sort of thing. My guest says the seller was a pawn shop in Southern Ohio. Oh, the seller for okay for what you purchased on. That's a side comment, so that has nothing to do with. Uh, oh, meant a pad. Oh, to cut out the vibe. I tried that. It just didn't work. Uh, I have the what now it's much louder now because I have the closet open. So if you see here, uh, I'm just gonna move this over. So you see there's my closet, and in my closet is my compressor. I usually have the door shut, but I left it open this time. The third floor radio show, how cool is that? So uh, the projector that Wendy has is a little uh, is a little quirky sometimes. I'm s that does stink. So as you can see, we're going back to working on her breasts here, and I was a little overzealous with the light, so I'm gonna I would say I'm about five inches away, and I'm just gonna dust over the light area of her breasts here because. The value was a little strong. Light value, that is. And we're pumping that trigger. So we haven't gotten into the mid-tone yet. Once we go ahead with the mid-tone, we're going to start deepening some areas. Uh, we're almost there. But right now, we're just going to continue to move around. And we're going to continue to get some of these uh, continue to move around and to redefine and get a little more specific with some of these shapes continuing to look for a second paint for a second So if anyone out there isn't doing that, and if you do it in the next week, I want to hear your story if that's helped you. Uh, do I ever use a gray finder? Not really. I used to. Uh, 
I just like to uh, you know bring it up together slowly uh, but it doesn't hurt right it definitely doesn't hurt to use a grayscale finder uh, but I don't use them and but I recommend them definitely so with this technique Alan is that you know what we're doing is we're just bringing everything together from light to dark and then we come in with the highlights and the light areas and then we go and uh, and then we go with the highlights and the dark accents so it really comes together so it's pretty cool now Bradley says he loves his compressor Bradley what compressor do you have and Mike S says he needs truck repairs before winter so airbrush supplies are on hold I definitely understand that I need that truck definitely I need you to get around that's for sure uh, yes the grayscale is a great learning tool Bill says and you can use them less as you gain experience very true very true like anything else as you do something more everything sort of goes in slow motion and you start seeing things uh, a lot faster Silent Air, yes. Uh, Ray has a Silent Air, and uh, he loves it too. Uh, now, you know, I'm, he's taking a class with me, and his goes off, and I'm like, "What was?" I just hear like a little click, and I'm like, "What was that?" He's like, "That's when the the air compressor finished the the motor finished." And I'm like, "Then mine goes off, and it's like <laughs> big difference." So definitely would love. Uh, a silent air compressor. I hear great things about them. I'm going to use my freehand shield and keep this hard edge going perpendicular. See that guys? And Alice says actually why I was drawn to this channel was because because he has been doing a similar art style but digital and now seeing it down with an airbrush who will be uh, buying an airbrush soon that is so ex so amazing Alan I'm getting into digital I'm using Krita right now so I really enjoy uh, enjoyed what you guys do I'd love to see some of your some of your uh, digital work and it's going to translate really well into airbrush. You're going to have a good time, and I'm here to help you if you have any questions. And make sure uh, now, uh, make sure you uh, friend me on if you haven't already on Facebook, which is Timothy John Luke Smith, and then we'll invite you to our Facebook group, Ink Flingers, and we all talk and show each other's work, which is really cool. My guess is those uh, California air compressors are awesome costs way less than silent air but not dead silent like the silent air I have the I have the uh, California air tools and mine is louder as I use it more so they tend to wear out pretty quickly uh, as far as like the compressor gets louder and louder uh, so Bradley says Tim's right all you hear is the click off and when it comes on and off yeah it's so fantastic and so that's really cool yes thank you Wendy Timothy John Luke Smith PSA on Facebook so go ahead send me a friend request and we'll get you hooked up onto ink flingers and uh, it's, a, it's great and we'd love to see what you're doing with the digital as well Let me see if I can show you what I've been doing on digital, uh, Alan. The one digital painting that I finished almost. Let's see. It is, where is she? I did it of Gal Gadot, which, you know, she's amazing. Let me go to pictures. See if she's there. Gal Gadot, where is she? yep there it is if I could show you I'm gonna pull that up in just one second
let's see, this PC, pictures, here she comes. in pictures just be one second guys I want to I want to show Alan this one picture that I did using critter do you like using critter because I I like it because it's a little like uh, it's not the uh, Adobe program which I don't want to use I don't want to use what everyone else is using so here you go so let me see if it comes up ah oh, it didn't come up that's surprising Oh, you know why? I think it's because it's a uh, program that it's a critter file. So we'll we'll show you later. That's for sure. Uh, Raul says he has Silent Airs as his main compressor, but added an auxiliary 3L Air. Okay, very cool. So two air compressors, which is really neat. And so let's get back to our painting here. But yeah, I use Critter and it's really great, Alan. Uh, so when you're ready to, you know, get your airbrush, let me know. And we'll make sure you get the airbrush that is right for what you want to be working with. So I'll definitely help you with that. Also, I can help you with, you know, what to get. The compressor, air hose different things like airbrush holder you know where you hold the airbrush all that stuff procreate on his ipad very cool but started with photoshop yes and wendy uh does digital art as well uh, wow so it's good to have two wire compressors i think but if you can get a hold of one of those silent air compressors neighbors will be happy i know that So we're doing pretty good. We are pretty much done with. So let's go ahead and finish the dark here. And while we're doing, we're just going to pull that down. So I'm a good, I would say, five inches away because I want that smooth. I'm not going to overload the surface. Remember, it's paper. You don't want it to get too too wet. And so David says he's going to need help with the airbrush. Tim, you, I'm no problem. Definitely take care of you and make sure you get the right airbrush there david so that's for sure and wendy says she doesn't do digital just played around with it i need to learn oh very cool yes oh sure i'm thinking of doing a digital channel so that's something but that's you know i gotta i wish i had more time i would love to do a digital channel but time is definitely of the essence So we're just letting that dry. We'll catch up with that, okay? So we're gonna move over here. And so Bradley did Photoshop in college, which is pretty cool. And let's go ahead and reinforce this beautiful hard edge of his shoulder by painting out the background there. See that so we're gonna make that shoulder come forward remember it's not the, just a value that really determines how strong or how emphasized it is it's the value that comes next to it and please make sure that you're using your freehand shield perpendicular and not parallel looking for a second painting for a second See how we're bringing that forward, which is really cool. Yes, Procreate is a lot of fun. Now, uh, I think, now, Bill does fur videos. I don't. I don't do any fur. Strictly the figure 
and the portrait in an airbrush there are some videos on my channel of pastel so check them out and also pencil drawing I actually have one video uh, one short video on Krita using some of their uh, corrective techniques so that would be pretty cool if you check that out I think I did that a couple months ago and Let's see, one of, uh, one of Bill's earliest video was an entire pack of lions. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Bill's your man if you want to do fur. I'm definitely not. I'm more of a specialist here. I'm going with a niche, you know, on this channel. So if you want to learn India ink and airbrush on this channel, it's definitely the channel to go to. If you want to take uh, my online classes, and I also, I teach India Ink, but uh, for advanced students, I will teach color. And we're going to go ahead and use our freehand shield. Actually, it's real, this is really blurry, this edge here. So pay attention to the edges, it's going to go a long way. So you see how this edge is so blurry so we want to make sure we do that and we're going to work on this value here so you see the important thing guys is to move around you want the painting to come together I never want to see now one of the things that if you ever look at speed paintings with eBay, I mean speed paintings on YouTube, you see someone go ahead and they paint the eye and they paint it to the finish and then they move over here and they move down to the nose and they move out. Well, that's all fine and good, but that's not painting. That's not, that's not really, you know, experiencing the figure or the portrait in ways that a painter does it. You're not really feeling the three-dimensional qualities. You're just pretty much reproducing values without having that further understanding. I'm gonna say that you have to paint the ensemble and, and make the painting look like it happened all at once. And if I'm gonna set it, it's correct. Angra is a 19th century neoclassical painter from France. He lived in 1780. To, I believe 1864 I'm not sure if it's 64 or 68 but I think he lived 88 years and that man was probably the greatest draftsman in the history of art and uh, he'll tell you also that a good painting is 80 percent drawing which if the drawing is is on point then there's a very good chance that the painting is going to come together So I believe Angra's birthday is the 28th, so I'm going to be doing something special the week of that live stream uh, in uh, tribute to my favorite artist, John Augusta Donig Angra. So you see how we're working on that background there? We can also uh, pull this arm further by further emphasizing uh, this arm with the freehand shield going perpendicular. This all looks pretty dark, but it's going to get much darker when we go with the mid-tone value. Using Speedwall Super Black India Ink, we got this light value using the Createx 5050 illustration colors. And of course the paper is Canford Cardstock by Dayla Rowney and this color is Dreadnought Gray that we're working on today. So guys if you haven't go ahead and hit that like button on the video it really helps out the channel the algorithm so if you haven't just go ahead and hit that like button I'd appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe and also hit that little bell icon that bell icon will alert you when new videos come out so if you like what you see support the channel by you know going ahead and doing those things if you haven't already 
So how can we have a cake for his birthday if we can't say his name? I'm gonna, now I have the ability to do this now. I'm getting better with this whole live stream. Oh my God, so this has been doing live streams for a year now, I think. It's been a solid year of doing this live stream every Wednesday night, so that's pretty cool. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna type in his name for you. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, watch this. Sean, whoop, caps lock. Sean Augusta Dominique Anga. There he is, guys. So now you can see it. And we definitely have to figure out a way to uh, to do that. So I put down John Augusta Dominique Anga. Did that come up? Let's see. Yep, there it is. John Augusta Dominique Anga. Look, it has a little crown there. I guess that means I'm uh, king of the castle or something like that next to my name. <laughs> No, that just means I'm the person, uh, you know, doing a live stream. So that's pretty funny. Wendy says she would have butchered up. Well, once you know the French, it's easy. Once you know those French names, it's easy, Wendy. I remember when I was in art history class. Yes, that is a lot, right? Uh, I am the king. No, I'm not the king. I'm, I'm just a regular guy painting like to share my information with you great people. But I appreciate that. Uh, that's a lot. Yes, definitely. John Augusta Dominique Anga is a long name. So, so you see we're going to, going to continue uh, pulling out that hard edge over here. Remember, it's the value next to it that really helps any value become stronger by having a contrast of different values. So you see how we pull that arm further to us? Where do you see when we come in with the white after we finish with the 6 to 10 guys? You guys are really going to be happy. So when we come back it's going to be 6 to 10 and that's our medium, medium value. Uh, I'm going to be sending an uh, email uh, so what I want you to do, if you're not on my mailing list just yet, guys, and yes, fondant paint cake time, very cool. Yeah, look up Angra, man. He's really fantastic. His work, his drawings are just out of this world, really just amazing. Uh, so what I want you to do, if you haven't already, is to go ahead and email me at paintedglyphs at gmail.com and then just go ahead and do that and what we'll do is we'll just put you on the mailing list so you know anything new coming out any new uh, impromptu live streams or even videos that I do from time to time I just did a really cool uh, which is really nice I did a really cool speed painting and so that was neat and it's neat to see how or very cool to see how a painting comes together all at once not a couple of eyes and nose and mouth and then hair but to see it evolve slowly and you can see that very clearly in the live in the uh, speed painting which is pretty neat Kiva is needed I haven't seen Kiva in a while uh, I hope she's doing well does some great work and we do need more estrogen I'm always happy in you know I go to the gym now and when I go later there's like no women you know and then when you know it's it's like I say at the gym we need more estrogen there too you know it's just guys working out uh, but I think the women go earlier in the day I like going to the gym probably around 10 o'clock at night and it's really nothing but guys there
Oh, now has Kiva messaged you in any of the pictures she's been doing lately? The world does need more women. I agree 100%. I'm all for women. So we're just moving around. We're finishing up. Yes, Kiva is definitely awesome. She is the greatest. Uh, it's really great. Her and Wendy have really been instrumental in this. So looks like I, so guys, it looks like I'm out of ink. See that? So we're going to just probably close this up a little bit early. But if anyone has any questions right now, uh, Tone loves women. Yes, you know, women, women, women. Men are great. Women are great too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, type in. Women are great. So you see that? I'm, I'm, well, I put e-women. So I guess that means accidentally. Maybe that means women online. <laughs> I don't know. So, so what we're going to do is... Oh, cool. So I see that David just emailed me. I'm going to put you on that mailing list and invite you on to Ink Flingers. That's going to be fantastic. So uh, that's really neat. Uh, Alan's wife, yes, it's good to see Alan's wife, fantastic, and uh, uh, Bill said his wife would surely come back, and so that's really great, so yes, Alan's wife does count, definitely, so yeah, more women the better, you know, men and women, you know, we gotta, uh, but my demographic seems to be a lot of men, but that's okay, you know, women will come along when they see how great it is, how great you people are and how nice this group is. Every week, you know, we have our regulars and it's just fantastic. I really love it. Really very happy with that. So, this is my website, which is paintedglyphs.com. So I really recommend checking that out. Uh, I have to update, I'll update it in a little bit. Uh, so paintedglyphs.com, what's gonna be coming soon is the Airbrush and India Ink Supplies. Probably within a week I'm going to be offering some stuff there. And then uh, the current auction on eBay, that one is currently done. And I have to uh, update the picture on that. So definitely going to update that. Where I get my paintbrush is from this website right here, which is usaairbrushsupply.com, which is really fantastic. Uh, you know, and if you buy anything on USA Airbrush, supply.com if you use the code Timothy PSA you get 10% off of everything which is really fantastic even if the product is on sale so that's really so it's compound a lot of a lot of codes don't work when you on sale but with USA airbrush supply.com and Timothy PSA you get 10% off anyway so that's fantastic and then so we are at 1124 we're gonna end just a little early but if anyone has any quick questions, I'll be really happy to answer it. So this is the new background, glitching out just a little bit. We're gonna fix that, but that's a painting, a, a pastel painting I did years ago when I was heavily into the late classic Maya motifs. I actually learned how to decipher the, uh, the glyphs, the writing of the late classic Maya. So you see a lot of my older paintings will actually have deciphered glyphs from that, which is about 700 to 900 AD in central Mexico, and then part of Guatemala and Honduras. It's all pretty neat. Even Belize, uh, for Leticia out there, if she's listening or watching this later, in Belize they had some Mayan uh, ruins from the late classic Maya, which is pretty neat. So thank you guys for coming by. I really appreciate it. This is all very exciting. Uh, so the background was pretty cool. The glitching is magical. I like the way you say that. PSA is I'm a signature member of the Pastel Society of America, so I was able to I'm able to go ahead and put PSA at the back of my uh, name uh, for the Pastel Society of America. Even though I don't pastel paint as much, I still do. But I uh, it's pretty cool. 
So guys, thank you so much. You can watch this video in its entirely on my blog and here. So you'll still be able to catch it if you uh, need to. I'm probably going to do a speed painting or something during the week. Uh, and uh, thank you so much guys for hanging out. Oh, David says, is there any airbrushing videos you can recommend? Uh, mine coming out pretty soon. It's going to be a good one. The one I do like uh, is really cool. It's on Coast Airbrush. It's Corey Sinclair. He did the Wolfman, which was just out of this world. So if you get a chance to look at that one. So good night all. Thank you so much. Uh, and I hope you uh, have a great week. So take care of yourselves.